Hi everyone and welcome back to the TechniSci channel. Thanks for liking, sharing and subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at how I use Microsoft Whiteboard for graphing. I'm going to be exploring some features such as inserting images, inserting PDF, you can even insert PowerPoint and Word. I'm going to be showing how to use the ruler, how to use ink to shape and finally I'm going to look at how to use ink to table. So let's get right into it. Okay, so after I launched Whiteboard, I click on create new whiteboard and a page will come up looking like this. Pretty much a blank slate. So what I do, I usually change my background color. You know, just to give a little bit of contrast, so I'll use the blue. And then now, we're going to explore all these features that are in our settings. So first off, Active Pen. Now what Active Pen is, it really gives you an option when you have a graphics tablet to integrate your pen while you are using this software. So if you would recognize on here, you would see switch to inking mode. You have add text, add note, add image, insert, undo, redo. So when you click on that, you will get another option with the different pens, markers, eraser, ruler. This is some lasso select, undo, redo, just the same. All right. So let me go here. Once I select active pen, you recognize that both toolbars become integrated into each other. You don't see as many pen options, but your graphics tablet, your pen attachment for your graphics tablet would basically cater to those based on your ink pressure. So now we look at ink to shape and I'm going to show you how this feature works. So once it's on, so once it's on, and you draw a continuous, you do not break your strike, your, you do not break your stroke any at all, it will create an object. So this is particularly useful for maybe math teachers, physics teachers as well, wanting to draw a shape quickly. But of course, like I said, this works best when you have a graphics tablet. So I'm actually using a graphics tablet. See, didn't identify that one. That's because that is not looking like a circle. So there you go. I want to draw an ellipse. Didn't identify. Now, once it doesn't identify the feature, it will not make any change to it. So that's how you use that feature. I just delete all of that. You also have ink to table. And what that one is. So it basically, you can add, add all the way. And that's how you use the ink to table feature. Very nice. Now I'm going to undo because that's not the focus for today. We are going to look now at the toolbar location. Now, toolbar location, the default is in this position. But because I really prefer it to the side, I use left. I could have used right as well. But you do recognize, it will be hidden when I go to settings, but you do recognize that when it, it's at the bottom, you get more features rather than when it's at the left. But the features I'm not getting are not really an issue to me. So I use it like that. And then, of course, clear canvas. Let me just put another object or image here. See. So I can simply click on eraser. And then click again and I'll get clear canvas to erase everything on my screen. Or I could actually come to settings and click clear canvas. And then I would get to clear my canvas. Now to the meat of the matter. Using whiteboard for graphing. Really interesting thing. So I'm going to be showing you how to insert an image. So what I did is to scan a graph paper as PDF. So I'm going to insert PDF. And here it is, scan graph. No. Will ask me how many pages, but this is a single page document. So you just select the page or pages if it's more than one, and then you click select. And here is my graph pasted in my whiteboard. Very nice, very easy, very, very quick step. So you once you click on it, you get this highlight, you can move it around. This feature here allows you to resize, rotate, all of that. Okay, so I could have also inserted this graph as an image. 
so this is actually an image file has the same name so you realize it comes in likewise and you can just click to resize and do all of that right so i would have two graphs different method of inserting but you get the same image and product is the same so now let's work on our graph so the ruler now once you select your ruler you will get it coming out at a 45 degree angle so to change the angle of your ruler you would simply put your cursor on the area where the angle is and with your mouse wheel rotate the mouse wheel towards you to get it to go anti-clockwise or away from you to get it to go clockwise so i'm just going to go until i'm at 90. Okay, so now I'm just going to line it up with my graph to get my y-axis. Then I'm going to be using my x-pen. Make sure I select pen. I'm using my x-pen now to simply join my axis. If I was not using a graphics tablet, I could still get the same thing. And I'm going to be showing you now, without the graphics tablet, I'm going to be changing my settings a bit. So put you to zero to get my x-axis so if i touch any part of the screen i'm actually moving the screen but if you actually touch the graph you would be changing your graph so you recognize that you can get that so i'm going to turn off the settings now so turn off active pin And what I'm going to be using now is my ruler to do whatever I need to do. So once you go into settings, your ruler will disappear, but you just need to reinsert it. Select, make sure my pen is selected. And then I just draw a line right across. Now with whiteboard, what will happen is as long as you keep your pointer, your cursor close to the ruler, it will keep the line against the ruler. So you don't need to worry much. And then now I'm still using my mouse. Draw on my arrowhead there and my arrowhead here. Okay, so I'm still using my, my mouse. I could, what I could do is to just use the ruler to get straight lines. When your active pen is turned off, putting your mouse over here will not actually move the page, but will actually mark on your paper. So that's something to bear in mind. So let me continue. So I'm going to show you another method to rotate your ruler if you have a touchscreen laptop. So you just simply rest both fingers on the ruler and then you rotate. So there are many options with using this. Now I'm going to go back to using Active Pen because it saves me a little bit of time. Now to learn about scaling, simply click on my iCard and that will take you on my video about how to scale your graph. Okay, so now our X and Y axis is labeled. So now we can just label the numbering. So I'm gonna use a scale of two to one and I'm gonna make this axis time. And I'm going to use a scale of 2 centimeters to 5 on the Y. A 
Okay, so if we want to draw a graph now, I'm not going to be going through plotting. Just going to be showing you how you align the ruler. Just make sure you put your cursor at the area where the angle is and that will allow you. So you will just simply line it up with your points and I'm not going to start from origin for this one. Line it up with your points and if there were points, there are no points. And then you just draw your graph all the way through. And this is how I use Microsoft Whiteboard to help me to do graphing. It is simple, it is easy, and it basically resembles hand-drawn graphs. And so this tool is helpful when I'm teaching students virtually. So when I use it, I'm able to model the steps and all the procedures they would carry out in order to plot their graph. I really hope this was a useful video. I hope that teachers as well as students will be able to apply what they learn from this to plot graphs in physics. Thank you for joining. Please share if you think this video was helpful and it will help others share the link so that others will be able to benefit from the content covered in this video. Thank you guys. See you next time.